So we saw two studies today on recurrent and high-risk endometrial cancer, so both primary therapy and recurrent endometrial cancer patients. Both these were randomized phase two trials, one by the GOG 86P and one by the, our European collaborators in MITO 2 end study. The GOG 86P has a three-arm study with BEV as the uh, biologic and two of the arms and Temsorolimus as the uh, other biologic in the second arm. This three-arm study had carbotaxel plus BEV followed by BEV maintenance, carbotaxel plus Temsorolimus followed by Temsorolimus maintenance, and exabethalone plus carboplatin followed by BEV maintenance. In those three arms, it was compared to historical controls. What they found was clearly the carbotaxel plus BEV arm seemed to be the uh, winner of those three. In comparators versus the other two arms, what we found was a non-statistically significant difference in progression-free survival. And interestingly, a improvement in overall survival, which is only a secondary outcome, and again, this is premature data. With regards to the MITO2N study, their study did meet their endpoint of progression-free survival at six months. However, the overall survival, however, the overall survival was is not yet mature. Now in the MITO2N study, I should say that in those patients, it was just carbon taxol plus or minus BEV. And in the superior arm is the map arm. Obviously, it's very important to keep in mind that these are randomized phase twos. These are not phase three trials. We need to look at this in a phase three trial if the addition of bevacizumab to a high risk endometrial cancer uh, population to include advanced disease, measurable disease, primary and recurrent will bear out in progression free and hopefully survival advantage in the future. But this needs to be performed in a phase three trial.